I'm Andy Abbas with Data Agility Group. Now, this is the fifth and last of the topics that we're going to be talking about during this data center transition best practices. First, we talked about the assessment phase, then the design phase, then the implementation phase. We just completed the testing phase, and now we are on to the management phase. Now, the project management phase is one that holds everything together. Because your project manager, their or program manager, has the responsibility of making sure that all the previous steps, all the previous phases that we spoke about, are happening in an effective manner and they're actually happening the way they're supposed to be happening. There are several steps that we believe are best practices in the project management aspect of a data, in, within a data center transition. First is you want to develop a project scope. You want to figure out what is the project going to entail. You want to do your due diligence. You also want to identify any risks and tracking of issues that may come up. Because a migration can be very complex, if you don't have a very, very sound project management behind it, it's only going to make things worse. You're not going to have a cohesive approach to doing a transition. You need that one person or that one group who is ultimately responsible for the entire transition. You will have different subject matter experts within the organization, but the person who's going to have that responsibility for the entire transition is going to be the, either the project or the program manager. Second, you want to develop a signed uh, program charter. What does that mean? That means that you need to get buy-in from your management. Now, how many of you have actually done projects where you don't have a buy-in from your project man from your business owners or your, uh, your at all the way to the C level? You won't get the support. You won't get the flexibility that you need. One of the things that we talked about before was your uh, procurement process, where you need to, and during a transition, you need to be able to get something quickly rather than follow your process that may give you a three-week SLA. You need to be able to get your buy-in from your management. Very important. The other thing within this realm of a charter is you need to be able to put together a communication plan. You need to be able to say, if escalations need to be made, who are they going to go to? How are you going to be escalating? Who are the business owners? Who are the managers of the different SMEs that you're working with? Next, you need to develop the good old project schedule. Everyone loves a schedule. Everyone loves to know exactly what's going to happen when. Very important. The only way projects can sustain on schedule and on budget is to have a formalized approach on how you're going to do things and have milestones to documented. Also timeline. We've been in situations in the past, and I'll share with you where the customer comes to us and say, we've got to be out of a data center in three months. Whereas the ideal situation in that scenario should have been six months earlier. But we have to do what we have to do. Now in this scenario, we have to have a very aggressive schedule. So what does that mean? That means that the business owners have a lot of stake because they have to be out of a data center. The management have a lot of stake and also the subject matter experts have a lot of stake. So everyone has to have the buy-in. Everyone needs to understand what your deliverables need to be for you to be able to make that timeline. And then we initiate the project. Now initiating the project is where, again, the rubber meets the road. Because in that scenario, you're going to have to maintain your schedule. You're going to have weekly, maybe daily conference calls with the DBAs, with the systems administrators, with the application owners, with the storage team, the network team. Data center migrations are very complex. So you're going to have a lot of team members coming through, uh, coming together to discuss what needs to be discussed. Typically, most organizations approach it in two fashions. One is they meet as an application group and then within it, they will meet with the different IT groups. Because if you have several applications that are shared between different infrastructures, well, you want to be able to concentrate on an application-centric approach and then also engage the underlying foundational or infrastructure uh, IT departments that are responsible for that. One of the things I will share with you as my parting message on the management piece of it is lessons learned. Everyone is human. We all learn as we go through. We learn in every migration that we go through every day. 
So you want to be able to take those lessons learned and you want to apply it to subsequent phases or subsequent waves. That's the only way you're going to improve. And every environment is extremely different. So you want to be able to look at your environment, look at what actually needs to improve from the last time you did the migration. So if you're doing, let's say, five waves, how is wave one different than wave two, then three, four, five? You should definitely be improving, and you may find different things within each wave, but the goal is that you always are continually improving, and the project manager is the one who's really going to make sure that those lessons learned are included in every subsequent wave that goes on. I hope you enjoyed this session and the discussions that we've shared with you on our lessons learned, and we hope to see you at the uh, Data Center World, which is scheduled in New Orleans uh, this coming uh, September. And uh, if you do uh, come by, please uh, stop by at uh, my session, or if you see me in the hallway or at the convention center, uh, definitely come by and say hi. Thank you very much.